Hello, I'm Ferris Pilot, and today I'm going to be interviewing Sanctuary RPG guys, Sinasha, yeah. Hello. Dion, and of course, Sharp Eyes. Hello. Introduce yourselves, fellas. Well, um, I'm, oh. my name is Sharp Eyes. I am the lead developer um, of Sanctuary RPG. I am Neon Puzzler. I am the community manager for Sanctuary RPG. I'm Zanasha. I'm the chief marketing officer for Black Shell Games, and I manage the marketing and advertising for Sanctuary RPG. All right, it's great to have you on and great to be on your show as well, because this yep. is being streamed live, I believe, right now. <laughs> yep, it's a pleasure to be here. That it is. My main question was, and I believe you mentioned this earlier, off camera, actually, survival mode. Where did you get the idea of it? Neon Puzzler. So the idea for uh, survival mode was when we had first started streaming. Uh, we were looking for some fun ideas to have for all of the YouTubers who had gone out of their ways to do Let's Plays for us and uh, for the streamers who were having kind of mini competitions with each other. And on the server, we got a post asking, so uh, what can you guys do to help the streamers out? And we were kind of thinking, well, what, what would be a good thing? And we wanted a, a mini game type of thing. So what we did was we created the survival mode, which is you level up after every uh, – after every battle and every time it's just battle and then level up and battle and level up and get items and stuff and you progress on so it was kind of the idea of let's get something that they can race against or try to get to a certain level or something like that uh for the streamers and youtubers to have fun all right and like you mentioned a lot like you're implementing this sort of stuff to allow the game to be conducive for streamers youtubers is that part of your strategy in actually getting the game to grow an audience around it? I mean, it's, it is part of it, but a big part of it is also we, we want the community interaction. We love having the people come and talk to us. We love having the people come in and tell us, hey, guys, you're doing a good job. I want to make this about, the, uh, about, uh, about your YouTube. And we really like uh, having that kind of feedback come in. So I, I know we do love the uh, growth that it gives us through the YouTubing and the streaming. But I also feel like the community has given so much to us, we should do something to help them out too. Yeah, this is great. It, you're, you're really just, you're leading it right straight into my questions here. And my <laughs> next question was really just, how do you build a community around your game? I think a lot of it just has to do with finding people who like these kind of games and getting them to play it, honestly, because once that happens, everything else falls into place by itself. Because games like Sanctuary RPG, as you can imagine just from watching the trailer or playing a little bit of it, are so niche and they attract such a limited number of people that those people are already kind of of a similar mindset and those people already have experience with the more quote-unquote hardcore genres of games and different types of RPGs. So their, ca their personalities will blend together, and like Neon said, when they're streaming videos or racing against each other or making YouTube videos, it'll blend in together nicely. There won't be too much disparity in terms of what they think of the game and how the game is played. So I think a lot of it just kind of happens by itself once we put everything into play. But I mean, outside of like YouTubers and, and stuff, that sort of thing, I'm talking about like your average players, you know, just somebody who plays the game in their spare time and then maybe goes on like the official forums, or I guess you guys have a subreddit. To just yeah, post yeah. and enjoy the game. How 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 do you build that kind of community? We we try to keep our community as happy as we can. Like Nia mentioned, they give us feedback. We always have we're always asking for feedback. Every time a new release is up, out, people post on the subreddit feedback, bug reports, things like that. So we always try to make maintain a conversation. If someone posts a feedback or a bug report, we don't just leave it there and say okay we got it. We make sure to reply and take the time out of our day to reply personally to them what they think. Because for us every player is valuable and we we love all of our community. Everyone's done such a fantastic job just discussing and working together on the subreddit. Um, another aspect of it is definitely things like that just straight up make the community happy. We do a lot of giveaways on our subreddit. We do we give away mainly indie games um, because we really like to support the indie community and people like us who have a similar goal. But we also do a lot of giveaways when we're trying to promote our new stuff. For example, our composer, um, Rafael Langoni-Smith, just released a piano version of our soundtrack. So for that, we're running a contest right now that finishes in a couple of hours um, on Friday the 21st that promotes that um, soundtrack, the piano version of the soundtrack. So definitely incorporating different aspects of our game and the community into community activities made, you know, gets a lot of people and attracts a lot of people to our subreddit. So, something else that helps our community is uh, us as devs are very active in the community. So it wants the, the people who play the game, uh, if, if they love it, they, they really fall in love with it, as you've seen, um, and you can't stop playing. 
And the fact that the devs are able to be there, right in there with them, and they can give us ideas and we can implement those ideas into the game that they've suggested, they really like to see that. I mean, it, it allows the player to feel like they're connected to the game, which really helps with our community. But one of the things, uh, we've been doing a lot of things for community interaction. We've been running our Indie Juice podcast uh, stream, and that's every Saturday and Tuesday from 6 to 7 uh, Pacific. And we run our, uh, we have a couple of cool new uh, ideas that should be rolling out really soon for our YouTube and other stuff like that. Just trying to uh, get more of the normal gamer in. And make trying to make Sanctuary a household name. <laughs> well, if you're trying to make it a household game, I, I really have to ask the question: Why go text-based? It, it like it clearly limits your audience. You have to admit. So, um, basically, Sanctuary RPG started off as just me um, trying to um, make a game that I could enjoy. I was I was playing a lot of Diablo three back in the day, and uh, and and, uh, and um, a lot of the uh, core game mechanics, um, namely the Real Money Auction House, kind of ruined the experience for me. And so um, initially, I created Sanctuary RPG just to be a demake, um, if you will, of Diablo. And um, after um, we spread it onto Reddit, um, it it kind of garnered a, a cult following. And uh, so I built it up from there. So, I mean... We, we, we don't think that there will be a, a huge market coming back for these nostalgic games. Uh, however, we, we do see a lot of people coming from their childhoods and seeing this game and then wanting to play it and kind of relive their childhood. Uh, I mean, I mean the people who love roguelikes and have loved roguelikes for a long time are a big part of our demographic. and It's, it's our main market, and we try to promote to those people, but we're not expecting it to grow immensely as the fan base for retro-style games continues to be quite niche, I mean. Uh, we're never going to get those AAA kind of uh, kind of uh, fans, but I mean that doesn't always th- that doesn't make me feel bad. It makes me feel like we've made a game, and there are people that love our game. And even though it's not the biggest game out there, it's still uh, an accomplishment, and it's still awesome in my mind. Right, Sanasha, anything to add? I think they've covered pretty much all of it. And you asked the question, why text-based, why ASCII-based? Uh, a couple of reasons. One, it's very easy to do. <laughs> like, as Sharp mentioned, when he started off, it was pretty much just him and one or two other devs and artists. And making art for any game is difficult, let alone a full-scale production. You know, AAA games, Crisis, uh, Call of Duty, all the name, you know, name any game series, they've got a series of artists, teams of artists just working for months and months at a time to create these all these intricate pieces of art. And... Sharp didn't have that kind of time or ability. No offense. but <laughs> So for him, text-based was just an easy way to go. And also, like we mentioned, we're trying to emulate games like Zork, like NetHack, like Dwarf Fortress to an extent, things like that that have influenced us. And maintaining a similar style really helps that show through. Yeah, and, and uh, that's not to devalue ASCII artists because we do have a talented team of artists working working with, with art. But, and they are amazing. Yeah, but um, the... You know, we we simply didn't have the budget for um, bigger endeavors, and, especially with a free-to-play game. And um, you know, on the subreddit, I've seen you guys are pushing out these updates pretty quickly. And I was just wondering, like, how do you manage to have all these quick, quick updates when you have such a large team? Is is it because maybe you don't focus so much on the art aspect? I mean, well, well yeah. Go ahead. Uh, we have had uh, our artists work for a long time, and then they will release a pack of art, which we release in an update, and that will add in. And then whenever we want to implement a new boss or something like that, we'll have a new uh, piece of art come in. But what's good about that is uh, that it allows the artist to be really creative with it. I mean, mm-hmm. each line has 12 different areas of scale on it, and each uh, one of those areas can be filled in with different pieces of text. So, I mean, text-based ASCII art can be very complex. Uh, So, I mean, it's not just that 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 would make it faster. Uh, uh, We we really listen to the community and see what they want to have happen, and we work towards that. We also work towards our goal of when we want to release the game, and uh, we got to give a lot of credit to Sharp, who does a lot of time and effort into the 
amazing coding that has made the game. Sharp, anything to say? <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Neon. <laughs> 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 All right, well, um, you were talking about how you get your artwork done. You have them do it in batches, and then afterwards you implement it slowly into the game. Do you think this is a good idea for maybe somebody who's making a graphical game as well? Um, absolutely. So art art is usually either done um, at the onset or after the prototype is complete. Um, usually with, with 2D games, um, the game will be laid out completely with, with placeholder art. Mm -hmm. And then the dev team will, will bring on like an artist. Or... Um, the the artists and the programmers will work together and uh, build build the game from the ground up. So there's there's multiple ways to uh, to approach this. So this leads me into this question: um, what kinds of what kind of experience did you guys have regarding games development before you started working on Sanctuary RPG in your current roles? Uh, Neon, uh, I had been coding for a while. Uh, I don't I don't do coding with uh black Shoal. but uh i've been coding for a while i've been looking into the indie scene uh, i was very active in the indie scene take forums stuff like that and i was searching around for uh new indie games and i saw sanctuary and i really loved it i mean because i i grew up with muds and stuff like that really text-based heavy stuff so the text-based graphics didn't bother me and the storyline was great and it wasn't as good as it is now. It was very kind of dry at the time looking back on it. But it was uh, <laughs> good art for ASCII, great uh, stuff like that. And I, I loved it. I fell in love with it. And it, uh, in a little while, I started talking to Sharp and uh, our quality assurance lead, Yishin. And we were talking to them for a while. And I ended up uh, – they, they thought, well – he sounds pretty, I, I forget what he said, but they ended up being impressed and asked me if I wanted to work as their community manager, and I said yes, and here I am. Uh, I did not have any previous, I, I had a bit of previous sales experience, but nothing uh, in a community management position over the internet. And uh, Zinasha? Uh, what experience did I have regarding games development prior to Sanctuary RPG? I'll answer that or question with one I mean, word. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, yeah. but or marketing too, because you are, after all, the CMO. Well, that's true. Um, for both of them, essentially none. Game development, pretty much none. I, w I was a kind of casual gamer for a while. I liked gaming. I liked playing games. I never thought about the other side of it though. Mm -hmm. And marketing and stuff. I was always very business minded, very entrepreneurial. I find myself and. It just kind of came naturally to me for a while. But my first major project in terms of marketing and promotion was Sanctuary RPG. All right. Daniel? And um, as for myself, um, I grew up um, on games such as Commander Keen, Doom, Wolfenstein. I uh, grew up loving first-person shooters, and I didn't really get uh, into the RPG genre um, up until Diablo 1, which is quite a quite a long time ago. Um, <laughs> after <laughs> um, So old. Um, after I got into Diablo, I realized that um, part of what makes a game great is replayability. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I uh, actually got into developing custom maps for for games such as um, uh, StarCraft One, Age of Empires, Warcraft Two, um, and I pretty much became kind of a level designer, pr uh, producing maps for the community, and uh, then I. Tr um, Graduated to 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 a little bit of HTML, JavaScript, modded a few games there, and um, now I'm I'm here with Sanctuary. All right, guys, just one last question to finish this off. What advice would you give to someone who's just starting out with game development, or or they're they're just starting to make their indie game? I'd say if I had to give one piece of advice to someone trying to get their word out about a game is don't focus too much on whether or not people like it or whether or not you know, it'll be received well or something. Just make something that's awesome and let it speak for itself. I think a lot of people nowadays focus on, oh, you know, I'll make this game and then I'll put it here and there and there, and they're thinking too far ahead before they actually have a nice polished product. I mean, you can have the greatest marketing campaign, the greatest advertising campaign. You could get TV spots, you know, whatever you want 
for a terrible product, and it's still going to be a terrible product, and people will flock to it, but no one's going to actually stick with it. Whereas for us, at the beginning, we had pretty much no marketing team, no major advertising going on. We just post occasionally on different forums. But we let the product develop, we let the product get polished, and now a lot of it is just letting it speak for itself and attract its own viewers. And now we have an amazing marketing team, right? Right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and Sharp, um, on, on the dev side? Um, with the dev side of things, uh, make sure to to polish, polish, polish. Um, uh, um, basically, um, a lot of indie developers think that, oh, well, I'm going to make a game, and, and it's going to be awesome, but then they never finish it. So... Um, <laughs> So my, uh, I guess, piece of advice would be to polish your game and then release it. All right. Thank you, guys, for the nice interview. Thank you. Oh, it was our pleasure. Awesome. Thank you.